The foggy Sunday, September the 15th, 1929, when Dad left Casterville at 8.10 a.m. to go pick up his friend Seba Bronson in Watsonville. It took about 15 minutes to load up Seba. Then they headed over Hecker Pass, finally getting out of the fog. Went through Gilroy to Pacheco Pass, where they saw an overturned truck with its load of rice down beside the road. Then down by St. Louis House, north through Gustine, Newman, Crow's Landing, saw dairies, cows, alfalfa. Near Modesto, they saw orchards and grapes. They drove around town, then north again to Ripon, Manteca, the outskirts of Stockton, into Lodi to look around, then went through Galt, past the old state fairgrounds, and into Sacramento to get gas about 2 p.m. Now they headed east by the railroad towns, Roseville, Rockland, Loomis, Newcastle. Now this is a quote. We waved at two good-looking girls on a lawn in Loomis. We're making a practice of doing that wherever we see them. Stop for 20 cents worth of orange aid in Auburn. Now they get out of the rolling hills and into the forest at Applegate and Colfax. They noted double and triple railroad tracks, too. Now they're going up through Emigrant Gap, Donner Summit. See, there's Seba by the car. Down by Donner Lake into Truckee. There's a wide road with lots of detours and road work. South to Lake Tahoe as far as Emerald Bay. Then back up to Truckee and up to Donner Summit. On the way to Reno at 6.30, but they stopped and looked around Truckee again. Arrived in Reno at 8 p.m., Parkway Hotel. They cleaned up, had dinner, took in the town. It's 7.30 a.m. on Monday, September the 16th, when they got ready to leave Reno and head for Carson City. They noted that Reno was four blocks by five blocks and had the Truckee River running through the center. On the way to Carson City, it was all like a few scrub trees, sick-looking brush, they drove east to Carson City to the Nevada State Prison and were given a tour by a guard, kitchen, offices, dining room, cells, and the infamous execution house. After that, back to Carson City and then south to Mound House, Silver City, Gold Hill, the whole area rocky, covered with shafts, tunnels, piles of gravel and rock, and then finally over a pass to Virginia City. Virginia City once had 50,000 people, Dad wrote, and now has 500. And a hundred million dollars in gold was taken out. Probably most of it went through that Wells Fargo bank right there. The local people seemed startled by strangers. They must not see too many. Then back to Carson City and on the way to Reno, they saw a wooden flume carrying water to powerhouses. And one of the streams ran through the university. They looked around the university campus, watched the football team practice, then back to the hotel, had dinner, looked over the town, saw many fine brick homes, Looked up all the gambling houses in wide open Reno, 206 miles. They left Reno at 6.30 a.m. on Tuesday, September 17, 1929. Drove through Sparks, headed over the mountains, passed Fernley and saw alfalfa and some melons. They turned north. There are mountains on all sides, all rocks, valleys of gravel, brush, and jackrabbits all around. Through the Carson Sink with alkali pools. Airplane beacons every five miles since Reno. Seba was driving on good road, 45 to 50 miles per hour. No signs of habitation except railroad section houses. They had breakfast in Lovelock, a small railroad town in the desert. They did run into re desert road construction at Imlay. They were making raised road beds with gravel dug from the desert floor. You detour anywhere you want to go. Roads up to 30 yards wide, a mass of deep ruts filled with a foot or two of light, fluffy white alkali dust. Sometimes had to stop and let the dust settle so they could see. At Mill City, they took a side road along the railroad for 10 miles. Had to stop for water because the car boiled over. Lunch at 1 o'clock in Winnemucca. Drove through Golconda, Battle Mountain, Carlin, all small railroad towns. Got into Elko about 545. Went to the commercial hotel. Cleaned up, went down to eat dinner. They're tired and will sleep late. 309 miles. September 18th, 1929. They got up around 8 o'clock, had breakfast, looked around town, went and picked up the car. They'd had the alkali dust washed off. Left town about 9.30. They saw whirlwinds all across Nevada and a lot of old cars pushed off the road into the desert. The view was the same as yesterday. Dust, sand, gravel, rocks, mountains, brush, and a few jackrabbits for 100 miles, except for Deeth, with stacks of prairie grass, a few trees, and a few ranch houses. Towns exist because of the railroad. There are standard oil plants in each town. Trains run as thick and fast as possible. They're crossing low mountain ranges, hoping for something different on the other side. 
but always another range and a long straight white line of a road with an occasional dust cloud. Airplane beacons appear every 15 to 18 miles in the desert. They saw beacons every five miles in the Sierras. Everyone's friendly, waving from cars along the roads, even from trains. Just before Wendover, they came to the end of the mountains, looked out over the Great Salt Desert, 80 miles across with mountains floating in the haze. They had lunch at Wendover, salad with old tomatoes and tough lettuce, and Seba found a worm in his. As a hot breeze, the Buick wanted to boil over halfway across the alkali flats. Ten miles of mountains, and then they spot the Great Salt Lake, past salt air, amusement, swimming resort with salt works and copper foundries. Two or three small towns, and then north in a long straight business street into Salt Lake City, about 6.10 Mountain Standard Time. Checked into the Maxim Hotel, had drinks at a soda fountain, went up to the room, went to bed about midnight, 255 miles. Thursday, September 19, 1929. Got up at 8 a.m., shaved, dressed, got the car, headed for the Mormon Temple grounds. Followed a guide on a tour, saw the tabernacle, impressed with the construction details, saw the seagull monument. Had breakfast, headed down Good Highway north to Ogden. Mountains on the east, Great Salt Lake on the west. Threw a few small farm towns and saw no tractors. Plenty of horses, men and boys riding, men driving teams, only alfalfa for hay. Into Ogden, the big railroad town. Nicest town we've seen since leaving home, they said. Had lunch, the best and cheapest yet of the trip. Practically all the buildings are of brick or stone, the finest homes on the area sloping toward the mountains. Noticed all the beautiful girls everywhere in Ogden. Seba tried to find a job in a lumber yard so he could stay there. They hated to leave. Noted that Salt Lake City is larger than Oakland and built on slopes like Oakland and San Francisco. The day sky was filling with clouds in the southeast. Back to the hotel. Seba napped and wanted to take in the town and check out the girls. Walked around just like Market Street in San Francisco. Went to see the Argyle case, a brand new movie. Back to the hotel and turned in. 134 miles. 1929. Drizzling rain. Ate breakfast and left Salt Lake City at 7.45 a.m. Headed east through canyons of red, green, brown, and blue rocks. Valleys filled with trees, the most beautiful mountains they'd seen so far. Elevation 7,035 feet, rolling mountainous country, rain falling steadily. Took a wrong turn at an underpass and headed 14 miles toward Ogden before turning back. Noticed lots of horses and Jersey cows. Salt Lake City was 86 degrees. Now they're wearing hats, sweaters, and coats. Into Wyoming at 10.05, mountain valleys with rocker log cabins, lots of sheep plus turkeys and chickens. The fan belt broke just past Evanston, the railroad center where they ate lunch. Thunder and hard rain. Notice the snow fences along the road and the railroad tracks. Lots of trains coming from both directions. The roads are slippery white clay. Through Fort Bridger where they got gas and had the radiator cap fixed. Past Lyman where a rodeo was in progress saw a monocoupe flying overhead. The tire was punctured on a sharp rock. Changed it fast so he could see the rain coming. Saw the same two carloads of young men they'd seen in the Sierras and near Carlin, all dogged with mud thrown up by passing cars. Ate supper at Green River, that's where they got out of the rain. Huge rock formations and cliffs all around. Past Rock Springs, a coal mining town. Spectacular lighting displays in all directions. Bitter cold and strong wind. Ice on the windshield. Into Rollins at 8.45 p.m. Hotel with steam heat in the rooms. 340 miles. First, 1929. Up at 8 a.m., had breakfast, headed for Denver at 9.30. Went through Parco, a company town with an oil refinery. Saw numerous wagons, homes for sheep herders. Fairly level prairie, some rolling hills. Lots of sheep at first, then horses and beef cattle. Saw road construction with seven three-horse teams on the wagons. They saw tents by the road for the workers. They stopped to let a freight train go by at Medicine Bow. Up tree-filled canyons to the summit of the Rockies at 8,835 feet. Heavy rain for a while. Got gas for 24 cents a gallon and into Laramie, a center for rail car repair. Amazed at the good prices they found for everything as they traveled, heard thunder, ate dinner and Seba drove on the ubiquitous gravel roads. Passing cars showered them with pebbles. During the trip, gravel cracked a lens and a mirror and Seba was spattered with glass bits when a rock popped a hole in the windshield. They still saw cars pushed into the brush beside the road and men hitchhiking. They traded water for an oil filter repair with fellow travelers. Into Cheyenne at 4 p.m., looked over the town and headed for Fort Collins. Arrived at 5.30 p.m., settled into the Northern Hotel, walked around town and noticed all the name brand stores. Had an ice cream special, then back to the hotel. 239 miles. 
Sunday, September 22, 1929. Left at 9.30 with no breakfast. 60 miles to Denver. Passed through Loveland, Bertou, and Lafayette. Rockies to the right, open rolling prairie to the left. Thickly built up country. Alfalfa, Jersey and Guernsey cows and dairies. Sugar beets, corn, some grain and beans, potatoes. Through Longmont, all the homes are brick. Schools are three and four stories. Concrete roadway all the way to Denver, heavy traffic. Into Denver a little before noon, noticed the river channeled into concrete. Drove all around the city and over a bridge over huge rail yards, loading sheds, packing plants, factories. Came back to the main business area and ate the first meal of the day. Saw the state capitol building. Many large and beautiful homes and hundreds of beautiful apartment buildings to the east of the business district, all made of bricks. Denver simply filled with large buildings, churches, colleges, schools, orphanages, high schools, and grammar schools, always one or more in sight. Found the Dover Hotel at 4.30, went out to eat and it was raining. Sunday dinner for 45 cents. Seba slept, dad wrote till about nine, heard an extra edition announced, went out and got a copy, walked around for half an hour, bed about 10, 106 miles. Monday, September 23rd, 1929, up at 8 a.m., Shaved, dressed, went out to eat breakfast. Picked up photos and went to the post office. Picked up mail. Seba's happy now and I feel better myself, said Dad. Checked out and headed south on Broadway, past miles of residences and small business districts, through the farming community of Littleton. Now closer to the mountains, saw fur ranches, fox and muskrat, into Colorado Springs at noon. Both decided it was the nicest spot they'd seen. Another swell cheap meal. I like this town better all the time, says Dad out of town to Manitou and up the steep road in hairpin turns to the Garden of the Gods. Immense rock formations on all sides. Saw the balancing rock. A bally Englishman took their photo for them. Paid a dollar to tour the Cave of the Winds. Astonished at the formations and 19 rooms of odd shapes. Bridal chamber where over 20 couples were married. Whoopee, writes Dad. 72 degrees outside, 54 in the caves. Back through Manitou and on to Colorado Springs. Left a tire to be vulcanized and took film to be developed. Found the Joyce Hotel. Met a man who had a son in San Mateo in New Central California. Exchanged information. Back at the hotel, Sebu was downstairs writing letters. Lost to bed, he could write seven letters in an hour. He came back to the room at nine. Both shaved and went to bed. 102 miles. Tuesday, September 24th, 1929. Got up at 6 a.m., dressed and ate breakfast. Set out for Leadville at 645. Took the main road to Manitou. Six miles of homes, apartments, and stores. Manitou itself was all tourist conveniences. Drove up a narrow, steep canyon for two or three miles. Followed a small valley for 30 to 35 miles with meadows for campgrounds and summer homes. Ascended for about 40 miles, then rolling hills and mountain meadows up to 9,200 feet elevation into a narrow rock line canyon. Prettiest scenery by far we've yet seen since leaving home. Followed a white water stream down with falls and rapids through three tunnels and deep cuts in the rock into a wide mountain pasture lined with rolling hills, snowy peaks in the distance, cattle and sheep ranches with log fences, observed men and machines stacking wild hay, saw many small lakes, descended a long and torturous grade to a large mountain valley into Buena Vista, then up a valley and north to Leadville, arrived at 115, elevation 10,200 feet, noticed being short of breath. Town's well worth seeing. The waiter at lunch noted the population's gone from 30,000 to four or 5,000 in 15 years. Saw buildings and ruins, old brick and wooden buildings and quaint old signs. Saw lots of children, number of schools and public buildings, left at 3 p.m. Followed the river, saw the remains of a dredger and the boulders and gravel left behind by the dredging. Had a flat tire, stopped in Buena Vista to get it fixed. Seba was driving, had about two hours in the dark. Notice people dimming their headlights when approaching other cars. Into Manitou about 7.45 p.m. Into Colorado Springs about 8. Cleaned up, went out for dinner, came back to the room. 287 miles. Wednesday, September 25th, 1929. Got up at 8 a.m., had breakfast, picked up photos, filled the car with gas. 9.30, picked up the repaired tire and headed south. Notice farm stands with cherry cider for sale. Through Fountain, then Pueblo. Then Walsenburg, Agulias, Trinidad, Starkville, Raton, Springer, Maxwell, Waltris, and Las Vegas, New Mexico. 
coal mines, brick factories, Indian village, horses, cattle, farms, steep mountains, winding roads, streams running full, ate supper in Las Vegas, 60 miles from Santa Fe, black banks of clouds now overhead, spectacular lightning, blue sheet flashes, downpour so heavy the water was inches deep on the road, drove through a foot of water in a dip and now running on three cylinders, stopped for a while on a hill. Into Santa Fe at 9.45, got a room at the De Vargas Hotel with a bathroom and a wonderful bed, 355 miles. Thursday, September 26, 1929. Got up at about 8 a.m., checked out of the hotel, got the car and looked over Santa Fe, 10,000 people, 7,000 feet altitude. Noticed that the streets of the town ran in all directions, following old trails. Saw adobe houses, jackasses loaded down and led right down the middle of the street. Visited the oldest house in America, Dad standing in front in the photo, the governor's building, and the oldest church. Ate dinner and left for Gallup at noon, rolling hills for 20 miles, then down a steep rocky bluff where the first flood damage was spotted. 20 feet of road at one end of the bridge washed out. Detoured to a temporary approach, piles of debris all along the guardrail, four feet above the floor of the bridge. Spotted an Essex with three women in it, sliding into a ditch. Seba grabbed the tow rope and they hauled him out. Into low, flat country at Bemalolo, lots of farms underwater, concrete highway now. Photos taken from a report written by the state engineer about improvements to the Rio Grande after the two floods in 1929. Detour just before Albuquerque. Mud, a foot and a half of water on the main road. The busy city of 35,000 was sandbagged. Saw about 40 homes flooded. Parts of the roads covered with mud and gravel. Teams and scoopers moving into piles on the sides. Many Indian homes, lots of jackasses and small horses all through the country. Saw about a hundred two-horse wagons. Crossed the river three times before passing through Las Lunas. Soon came to a damaged railroad bridge. Work gangs on both sides. Two pile drivers putting in 90 piles for a temporary replacement. Dad got out to take a picture. Stepped over a bush with a rattlesnake under it. He kept on going. Tried to pass a tractor grader in a narrow fill and slipped over the edge and got stuck. A rope broke twice each time someone tried to help. By this time, the grader was back and pulled him out. Stopped at Grant's for supper, then many detours around roads washed out or underwater over the 60 miles to Gallup. Arrived at 9.30, checked into the Grand Hotel, into bed at 10. Friday, September 27, 1929. Got up at 7 a.m., wrote a letter, checked out and had breakfast. Left Gallup at 8.30 over rolling hills into high rocky cliff area, road washouts and deep sand, lots of short detours. Noticed mesas, passed through custom inspection into Arizona, into rolling hills again, single track, hard packed road, then water and muddy stretches, railroad bridges with temporary supports of stacked railroad ties, thousands of men working on the road and bridge repair, still seeing abandoned cars pushed to one side and men hitchhiking, into the painted desert, all the colors in the rock, Flocks of sheep and goats all through Indian country, kids out herding them. Ate dinner at Holbrook, passed through rocky country to Joseph City and into the desert. Strong wind blowing, crossed the little Colorado into Winslow, 20 miles of hills and then into pine and brush land. Pine forest start about 20 miles from Flagstaff, passed through town after getting gas. 37 miles to Williams on Route 66, through forest with occasional meadows, arrived at 4.30. Got a room, the best hotel, Dad said, none too good. Ate supper, up to the room at 8.30. Seba in bed at 9.30. Dad still up at 2.45 before turning in. 235 miles. September 28, 1929. Got up at 6.15, breakfast, and off to the Grand Canyon at 7.15. North from Williams through sparse pine forests and grassland. 32 miles of dodging rocks with occasional detours for road work. Past an airport where planes take off for aerial views of the canyon. Then barns and corrals. Inspected mules and horses at the barns. Noted it was fine stock. Reached the rim of the canyon. Dad wrote it was too marvelous and hard to try to describe. Layers of different colors and strata. A strong telescope to see the other rim. And a saddle party down in the bottom. Every color of the rainbow. Eight miles along the rim. The west end is Hermit's Rest at 6,700 feet where Dad had his picture taken then back to the camp and 25 miles to the east end at Navajo Point, 7,450 feet high, thick pine forest all along. Dinner at a lunchroom on the rim, saw a boat that had gone from Green River to Needles, left at about three, ran out of gas 15 miles from Williams, poured in the reserve and filled up at the first gas station they came to. 
Seba's chili con carne upset his stomach, went right to the hotel room and to bed. Dad walked around, had dinner at 7, and got a shave. To bed about 8.30, 195 miles. Sunday, September 29th, 1929. Up at 8.30, Seba much better. Checked out, ate breakfast, left Williams at 10.15. West through Pine Forest, turned south at Ash Fork, into brush country, then level grassland with cattle guards and horse fences. Rocky country, then mountains, then into Prescott, a nice town with a town square and a courthouse, ate dinner. More pine forest, 50 miles of mountains and sparse brush, down a steep cliff into the Arizona desert, overheated cars by the side of the road, into Congress Junction, a filling station town, brush and cactus country, through hot springs and into Whitman, stopped for a cold drink, thermometer said 102 degrees, hit concrete road, 22 miles from Phoenix, past Marinette, Peoria, Glendale, all with cotton gins, into Phoenix about 4.30, looked around for half an hour, the streets lined with trees, Checked into the Patrick Hotel, cleaned up, and ate supper. Up to the room to strip down and try to cool off. Went out about 10.30 to walk around. Spent most of the time in the hotel room trying to sleep in the heat. 203 miles. September 30th, 1929. Up at 8 a.m. and out of the hotel. Ate breakfast. Up to the Veterans Bureau to look up Ray Castro, originally from the same part of California. Saw him and arranged to meet at 11.30. Got gas and changed a bad tire for the vulcanized one. Stopped at a juice stand for a jug of orange juice. Observed that Phoenix is becoming a winter resort for Easterners. Picked up Ray, headed up to lunch at Ray's house in northwest Phoenix. Took him back to work at 1 p.m. Drove 50 miles on concrete highway west through farms and dairies, lots of irrigation canals, cotton fields, lettuce, and packing sheds along the tracks. Through Cashy and Buckeye, Palo Verde, over the Hacienda River, turned south and crossed the Gila River. Turned west at Gila Bend through Sentinel, Aztec, and Stovall. Stopped for a cool drink, 100 degrees. At Mohawk, stopped for cool drinks and gas. Through a desert valley to Welton at 5.40 p.m. More cool drinks, 98 degrees. Saw a young couple whose car broke the steering knuckle. They and others stopped to help. About 30 men in a truck with a good big tow rope got them out of the ditch. Dad and Sepa were first to come and last to leave. Stopped in Yuma at a garage to send a tow truck. Drank more water and fruit juice in Yuma. Decided to keep going to El Centro since it was too hot to sleep anyway. Through a California inspection station where inspectors were checking for contraband fruit. Into the California desert, 82 degrees at 8.45 p.m. Another cool drink. Spotted a drive-in movie theater. Into El Centro at 10.05. Set watches back to 9.05 for Pacific time. Checked into the Princess Hotel. Drank a pitcher of ice water. Took a shower and tried to sleep in the heat. 272 miles. Tuesday, October 1st, 1929. Got up at 8.30, checked out of the hotel, paid $1.50 for the twin bed room. Had to get a tire fixed. Ate breakfast in a cafe with a noisy family. Left quickly after toast and orange juice. Headed east to Calexico and Mexicali. Crossed into Mexico, inspected all the gambling houses, beer gardens, liquor stores, etc. No paved streets. Watched the silver and bills flow like water, said Dad. In a million dollar casino with a horseshoe shaped bar and 13 cash registers. Crossed the border back into Calexico at about noon, headed west toward San Diego, got to the main highway at Sealy, got gas, hit the rockiest, steepest mountains yet seen, all concrete highway, many little summer resorts in the mountains, stopped for lunch at Jacumba Hot Springs, onto a hundred miles of mountains with lots of road work, into La Jolla and El Cajon, then drove around San Diego, through the business district and along the waterfront, found the hotel where Nielsen Peel stays, but he was out, checked into the Harvard Hotel, Zeba went to bed, Dad went for a shave, put away the car, and had supper. Bought a bottle of orange juice for Seba. In bed at 10. Seba talked for two hours. 159. Up at 9 a.m., ate breakfast. Tried Uncle Nielsen's hotel, but he wasn't in. Left San Diego about 11 and drove to Tijuana. Back at 1 p.m., not impressed. Ate lunch in San Diego and found Uncle Nielsen at home. Talked for about an hour and a half. Left town a little after 3. Miles of beaches and sand dunes. Noticed real estate developments and lemon groves. La Jolla Pine, San Clemente, Laguna Beach, Balboa, Newport Beach, and into Huntington Beach with its thousands of oil derricks. Turned north for Los Angeles through many more oil fields. Derricks lit up at night. Into Los Angeles, Dad said with all its noise and terrible traffic. After 9 p.m., checked into the Cordova Hotel, had orange juice and toasted sea cheese sandwiches, 176 miles. Thursday, October 3rd, 1929, up at 7.30, left town, remarked about the fastest traffic they ever saw. 
saw elaborate homes in Hollywood, got gas in North Hollywood, headed to Glendale, where Seba tried to find his aunt, back to Burbank in the San Fernando Valley with orange and lemon groves and vineyards, up toward the ridge route through Newhall, Saugus, Castaic, then 65 miles of the most torturous twists and turns. After Grapevine in the slow San Joaquin Valley, drove on the longest straight stretch of highway. Into Bakersfield at 1.30, drove on through Famosa, McFarland, Delano, Tipton, Tulare, Kingsburg, Selma, Fowler, and into Fresno, olive and fig orchards, on through Madera and turned west, stopped in Los Banas for supper, left at 7.05, drove home over Pacheco Pass, through Hollister, over the San Juan grade, and into Castroville at 9.05, 395 miles.